Hey homesteaders, it's Audra. So who's focusing on planting their garden right now? Who's got it on paper? Who's got it in their brain? Who's maybe started some seedlings? So when you're starting this year, consider companion planting. Companion planting is where you take one plant and you add around it the plants that are going to help it grow, help fend off pests, help fend off diseases, things that are going to make your garden grow to the best of its absolute ability. Some of my favorite ones to grow together are these. Now, I'm not planting tomatoes next to peppers. Don't do that. There's a whole bunch of diseases and pests that these two share, but I'm going to break them up. Check this out. I'm going to slide some plants on in there between them. I'm going to four to six foot gap at least between these, add in some carrots, some lavender, some chamomile. Oh, there's a whole bunch of things you can add in there to break up the space and have a much healthier garden. Did you know there are plants that literally, if you plant them next to your tomato, like onions, and basil, they actually encourage a larger, healthier tomato plant. Who knew, right? Well, I'm telling you this right now. I am sharing this information with you. I have been trying this now. Oh gosh, at least I think I have 10 years now on this property of trying, especially companion planting. And I have tried and failed and failed and tried and you name it. And as I've experimented and taken note and kept my journals, I'll tell you what my best harvests have been when these two are next to each other. It, it, it was phenomenal. Add in that lavender, chamomile, things like that. You will not believe the yield you will pull from your garden, the healthy plants you will have. You won't be battling insects as badly. You won't be battling fungus and blossom and rot and, and all these issues that you would have if you just planted in blocks and rows. And yes, that's how I grew up and that's how I gardened for years. My gardens were literally rows or blocks. And that's how everything was. And then I was like, why did those, I mean, a couple years ago, now that I've known better, what did I do? I planted a 30 foot row of tomatoes and I lost every single one. Yes. Yes, I did. Did I know better? Yeah. Did I plant any of these other options in there that would have saved my butt? No, no, I did not. Why? I don't know. I think it was 2020 and I think I was stressed out. But what I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is take my my failures, my oopsies, and don't do what I've done. Let mine be your stepping stone to be like, hey, she did that. It didn't work. It was bad, bad, bad. And, and jump off from there. Go, seriously, when I'm planting right, right now, I'm starting seeds. I have basil seeds and onion seeds that I'm starting with my tomato seeds. They're going to be companion planted right here in the greenhouse, in their tray. Why right, right from that age? Because I want to put them out together. And also, even here in the greenhouse, even though it's a closed system, I have my variety of problems in here with bugs and things and fungus. And by knowing that certain plants are going to protect other plants, if I have them in the same seed tray and they're growing together, they're already encouraging better growth, protecting from pests, protecting from diseases right from the get-go. So why would I set myself up for failure? Now that I'm getting smarter, I'm remembering these things. I'm sharing it with you guys. Be smart. Do what I'm doing. Um, don't, don't do my failures. Um, but uh, consider companion planting. How is it going to make your garden the best garden you've ever had? So there you go, guys. Let's have the best garden we possibly can in 2023.